You want shirts? I got shirts. Only it's only game. Why you have to be mad? What is up, heroes of Dominion? My name is Charlie. This is Hero War Central, and it is Sunday, which means we're going to do a Q&A video. I've got five great questions for you guys today. Uh, but before I get into that, this video series is all about answering questions that I get asked on a weekly or even a daily basis. And for the most part, uh, I tend to answer questions that get asked on the Q&A video comments, um, including this one. So if you have a question that you'd like to see me answer next week, go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below. And what I tend to do whenever I choose the questions is I, is I take a question that I that I get asked several times throughout the week that I feel like I haven't answered yet or maybe it maybe it deserves a little bit more attention and that's the that's the reason why I grab the questions that I do and um, uh, if, if so so if you want to have a question answered leave it in the comment section of this video and I will uh, I'll get to it as soon as I can so I mentioned I've got five I've got four great questions and then one good team question as I like to do each week the first question is from Damian Ballard and he says is it, or he asks, I should say, um, is it worth it to start investing in glyphs and skins at mid levels? Um, he's level 62 and he hasn't unlocked all heroes yet. Is it worth it to wait for the better heroes and invest lots into them by saving what I've collected so far? Or should I invest all of my resources now? Thanks. So great question, Damien. This kind of speaks to the nature of the game and how you want to play the game. So a lot of people think of, uh, of this game as a uh, um, a race to the end. A lot of people think of it as a collection game is kind of how I think about it. A lot of people want to be the best, have the absolute best team they can given, you know, given whatever their favorite hero is. And some people, you know, don't care. Some people just want to have fun with, you know, whatever they, they want to do. Um, objectively speaking, skin stones and artifact components, that is the artifact coins, the essences, the scrolls, and the metal, those are the resources that you're going to need the most of uh, in the game by far you're gonna you, you'll eventually um, get to a point that you'll have plenty of gold plenty of xp potions um, plenty of i don't know sparks of power uh, to go around but what you'll never seem to have enough of is artifact pieces uh, and uh, and skin stones um, so what i would recommend and what i think is a safe recommendation that not a single person would would uh, uh, disagree with on this would be to wait until you have the team that you want to level. And what I mean by that is, is if you're leveling a Kira team, which I'll touch I'll touch on Kira team in the question five here in a second. If you're uh, leveling a Kira team and you're planning on adding Sebastian um, or Jet, but you don't have Sebastian and Jet, but maybe you're using I don't know, maybe you're using Thea in there for whatever reason you're using Thea in there. I would not invest the time into Thea. Okay, the 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 game is set up to be a marathon it's a long term grindy day by day by day by week by week by month by month game and just because your thea that you're not planning on using forever isn't doing the job right now um keep on grinding and you will eventually get what you need to get and then you can invest the resources into them. I've seen people suggest not spending any glyphs or artifacts or skins until uh, level 90 until you're absolutely sure, you know, what heroes you're going to plan on dumping into. The worst thing that I want to happen is for you to get, you know, five or six heroes that you've invested a ton in. And then all along, you've been planning on dropping one of those for another, um, suggest maybe Cleaver. Maybe you're going to drop your tank for Cleaver as soon as you get them. And then you got to invest all of those again into Cleaver. So I say, wait, I say, wait. Question two is Hans Peter. How do I beat a three tank team? Great question. So a three tank team is one that uses three tanks and uh, a support and a healer, or maybe three tanks and two healers, most often found on defense in Grand Arena or an Arena. And these are uh, a design choice designed to time you out because if you don't beat the team in two minutes, then the defending team wins, right? So what these teams tend to lack is offense. Okay, so if they have three tanks and a healer and a support, or three tanks and two healers, or maybe you know maybe five tanks, um, if you're gonna get real crazy, is they're not putting out enough damage. So what I do, what I do on my Kark team and on my uh, um, uh, my mobile team, my Luther team on mobile, is I sub out my tank for another damage dealer. I let my Kark, I let my Anvari, I let my whoever, my second hero in line, usually a warrior, I let him be the tank, and I sub in like Orion, or I sub in. Uh, daredevil or you know somebody that helps the team somebody that's designed to just put out a bunch more damage because your heroes probably won't get killed they probably lose the fight just by timing out if you have a little bit more damage 
that might be what you need to push it over the top. And it's because of this, it's because of this that timeout teams, they're the, they're the easiest to counter in the game. And I wouldn't recommend anybody level them up unless you just want to get real cute and have, you know, that's what you want to do. <laughs> and that's fine too. Um, SRTD300 asks, uh, just recently found a channel of our content. Very helpful. I wish I found it earlier. Thank you. Love you too. My question is, do you have a good guild for me and my friends to join? I am level 108. My friend is level 75. We're both very active, but our current guild just kicked my friend to make room for someone who is further along. This is tough. This is tough. The game definitely has progress in mind. And it's because of that that a lot of guilds will clear out weaker, lower level, uh, or less producing players in favor of higher level players. And while this is unfortunate, it's you know it's all part of the game. The only thing that I could say would be to join one of the dozens of discords. There's a lot. Jump on Reddit. You know, find one of the many many discords. There's a link to a discord in the description of this video as well. Uh, join in there. Most of them will have a guild recruitment channel. You can go in there. You can plead your case. People that are looking for heroes, people that are looking for teams, uh, are going to be in those channels. And if they like what you've got, then they might reach out to you. Maybe you got to do a little server transfer to make it work, but that's going to be my best advice. Join a Discord, get on Reddit, um, maybe you know even jump in some of the more popular Facebook pages like the Hero Wars Goat page or the Hero Wars Help Desk or the Hero Wars, uh, unofficial Hero Wars um, the name, the name escapes me, <laughs> but that is going to be where you're going to want to go to get uh, guild recruitment help. All right. Fourth question, Nicola. Hi, Charlie. Question. You said that there's a bad luck protection built in. So you get a totem when you spend 4,500 emeralds. I was lucky enough to get a totem before I spent that much. And I was interested if I'll get a second one now when I spend the 4,500. <sighs> no, unfortunately you will not. Um, the bad luck protection will only trigger if you haven't gotten a totem by the time you spend the emeralds. Whenever you do spend the emeralds, it does a check against the total number of totem pieces that you have. And if you reach that 4,500 and you've already gotten the totem for that slot, it will not give you another totem. So what ended up happening is a lot of people got one for Christmas and they were very close potentially to spending the 4,500 emeralds or, you know, the 4,500 emeralds, if you really wanted to save that up, isn't that hard to get. If you really wanted to buy it, it's just a couple of bucks in the emerald shop. Um, but it, it really screwed a lot of people out of, a, you know, out of a free totem when they could have just, you know, spent a little bit more emeralds and gotten the first one on bad luck protection and then gotten the second one uh, for free from either the Christmas event or one of the other events that, you know, maybe during a, a developer, a community manager live stream when they give out totems. So the bad luck protection will go away when you get a totem piece for that tier and it means you got to get forty-five thousand emeralds spent to guarantee the next one to guarantee the next one okay and finally i had a bunch of people this past week a lot of people asking me what is the best kira team and there are several several good kira team options uh, a lot of them um a lot of them will have, uh, you know, uh, Cleaver as the tank. Some of them will be more control oriented and have Astaroth as a tank. But one of the ones that we've been seeing a ton of is um, a lot of people tried this on day one. It was it was it was a lot of fun. As soon as as soon as Anvari came out, there was a there was a, a pretty noticeable synergy between Anvari and Kira. So a lot of people really dug into that, especially um, behind a cleaver or, or um, subbing in for King Mao. And uh, even more people are trying Anvari as a main tank for the team. And and for the for the pure uh, quick damage, trying to kill you, kill you really fast kind of teams, um, Anvari as a tank really excelled in that kind of in that kind of situation. Once Sebastian came out and people started, uh, people started throwing Sebastian into every team they could. I tried it, you know, Sebastian, Jet, and uh, Kark in my Kark team. A ton of people were really working for the Sebastian, Jet, uh, Kira situation to get working day one. And um, I think a lot of people really like that that kind of setup, Kira, Sebastian, and Jet. Um, the icing on the cake is a little bug involving Nebula and Sebastian and Kira. For whatever reason, for whatever reason, even though in the lineup, the hero position number, 
assigned to Kira, Nebula, and Sebastian is set one way. But when they actually go into a battle, the sprite, the actual image location, is set up in a way that Nebula's buff will land on Kira and Sebastian. When in the lineup, it appears that it wouldn't work that way. And I and I think it's going to get fixed. I think it'll get fixed sooner or later. Um, but I think I think the the most important or the most uh, popular Kira team right now. A lot of the long term players have been uh, saying this since day one, and, and I think it's just now starting to catch on. This past two weeks is uh, Anvari, Kira, Nebula, Sebastian, and Jet. Um, unfortunately, it dies really easily to <laughs> a certain other team that I don't want to really go into here. I'll save that for another video. Um, but that's the nature of the game, rock, paper, scissors. My Kark team is very weak to Kira teams. Uh, this, these Kira teams are very weak to another style of team um, that's out there that's pretty common. So, um, you know, do, do what you got to do. But that's probably the best. Uh, using Kira with Nebula and, you know, Sebastian and Jet is going to be the base of, you know, most Kira teams. So, hope... Uh, Hope you got that extra money because that's an expensive team. <laughs> well, that being said, I'm going to end the video here. I got on screen the last Q&A video. And then uh, I also have on here the um, the uh, the anti-Galahad video that got a lot of a lot of attention last week. If you are a uh, member of my Patreon, you'll have access to the Jorgen tier list video discussion that I put out yesterday. I hope you guys have enjoyed that video. It's gotten a lot of, a lot of interesting discussion around that video. I'm very, very proud of that video. Uh, but until then, I love you all, and good luck in Dominion.